This is a video of testing the Tesla E88CC tubes with the SOFIA tube tester as it was made by Audiomatica in Italy in 1995. This tester runs only under MS-DOS but you probably wouldn't even see the difference. What I'm going to do now is measure the plate current of this tube. So I select the menu for plate current. There it is. What I get now initially is an old menu, which um, was in the in the memory of the of the um, tester because I did some other tests before. But I have already set it up now for a dual test. I can do a single test. This is actually what you see here, and a dual test will test both triodes in the glass bulb together. When I press start, you will see the hazard lamp. On the tester going on and you will see the serial port working very hard. So I press now start. There you see it is working. Next curve, next curve, so we have now three curves, four, five curves etc. And I'm going to do 22 curves which is two times 11 and I take the number of 11 because that divides the, the voltage that I take in 10 pieces. So this, these are 11 curves, I take the number minus 10, then it gives a one, one step per curve. So I have to make 11 curves to get nice numbers, and 22 curves of course for a double triode, like this. Now here's the result. Now what we see here is a tube which is not bad. Looks okay to me, but that's all it is. This tube has two systems inside which are quite different and probably there are many applications where this doesn't matter at all that these are the, such applications where the manufacturer says nothing about you have to use matched or balanced tubes but uh, most hi-fi people uh, and myself also think such tubes as you see here are not the best you can get so i'll take this tube apart and i'm going to test the next one I have to wait a little bit for the tube to warm up. Actually, you have to wait a few minutes for an accurate result, but for a quick compare as we're doing here, I think it's already... We, we say the tube now is warm, so I press the start button. And you can see on the left corner the tube tester is working. We have to wait now a total of 22 seconds for the result. Just a few seconds and we're done. That's also not a very nice tube. Now you may wonder why all the tubes are so strange, but this um, is from my box of tubes, which I didn't like anyway. This is not a very good tube. Let's see what's, what's the problems and what's the irregularities that it gives us here. First of all, of course, if you compare at the same grid voltage, like let, let's take 5 volts, you see the yellow tube draws 10 milliampere and the blue tubes only 7. So 10 milliampere versus 7, it's, it's a difference, uh, it's not drastical, but it's not good also. The average tube, the average current for this tube at 90 volts is 50 milliamp 15 milliamperes in, by the data sheet. So let's look at 90 volts, it's about here. 15 milliampere is here, and that would require, I, I look now in the data sheet, a grid voltage of 1.3 volts. Now here we see the yellow tube needs minus 1 volt, so it by itself it doesn't pull exactly that right that amount of current if I go to 1.5 or 1.3 it 
it's about probably here and at 90 volts you will see it draws 12 milliampere well roughly estimated 12 and it should be 15. it's not really bad because differences like this are within the specifications but not not so with the, with the, with the other systems so the blue tube if i take the the, the, the blue curve here and a voltage of 1.3 volt would be here and then at 90 volt i would be at this as the, at the point of the arrow so we're talking about 7 milliampere instead of 15 so the, that's only 50 percent of the current so this blue tube is definitely bad it's not a good tube um, you can see that also from from the diode curve the diode curve of the blue tube starts actually normal it starts good the yellow tube is a bit strange but the, the, the blue tube starts good but then you see here this the slope of the line re reduces so the slope in the beginning is here but the slope at the, at the at the end of the line i have to bend it over so here at the, at the highest point the slope is like this and at the lowest point the slope is like this so you can see the slope of the line decreasing at higher current and it even happens already uh, here at 17 milliampere i mean if it would happen at 40 milliampere it's not so bad because it, it happens at some specific point but with the blue tube it happens already within the normal working area of the tube so this tube is definitely not a good tube i'm going to take the third tube now this tube has a problem with the with, with, with the plating of, of the of the pins as you can see the gold plating is is not nice and that's probably also the reason why you put it in the in the box of second choice tubes let's see how it tests we have to wait again for the famous 22 seconds I don't know if I can tell you the story at the moment, but uh, I have nothing coming up. We just wait for the 22 seconds to be over. Here you see the tester in progress. Just a few more seconds and we're done. There it is. Wow. That's a very strong tube, you would say. But it's not really, because the auto scaling uh, made a funny jump. So I'm going to put it down. And we have the, the normal scaling here, which is probably like this. It's good enough for this tube. Now, what is it doing? At 90 milliampere, 1.2 volt it's only 7 milliampere so this tube is nicely balanced there's nothing wrong with it but both systems of this tube are really weak so this is a bad tube next one You have to wait a little bit before it begins to glow nicely. Seems to be nicely on temperature now. We start the test. In the meantime, we can have a short look at the data sheet, perhaps. So you can see here, 1.3 volt grid voltage. It must pull 15 milliampere at 90 volt anode voltage. Now let's see what this tube is going to do. This looks like a good tube. Now. The tester is also always auto scaling, so in this at, at this point, I don't get get my same same scale as in the previous, but it doesn't matter. 
I have to estimate now where, where 90 volt is. It, as I would think, say it's here. Now I'll go to 19, 90 volts, 15 milliampere. So we are here. And as you can see now, we are at 1.5 volt grid voltage because here is y minus 1, here is minus 2. And we have to look somewhere around here where I say is 90 volts. So this tube is nicely within the specifications and maybe you would say the balancing of the systems is not so ideal but actually if you look really at the numbers which this gives the balancing is nice if i take for instance uh, something with which i can read better hold on i just i just i magnify the curves now it's the same curves what they just now magnified and now i can also get the 90 volt better here this is minus one minus two so 90 volts is here hold on okay now 90 volts is here well let's let's, let's just take 100 volts if you take 100 volts the difference between the systems is variable from 12.5 to 11. So that is, it's a difference, a small difference, but with any auto BIOS system that would balance out nicely. So this tube is, is, is well balanced, not ideal, not perfectly, but it's, it's good enough. One thing I see here, the yellow curve, I don't like this here. I don't know what it is, but it's normally an indication of some kind of a problem. So I don't know exactly why I picked this out, but this tube is also in my was also in my box of second second choice tubes. Well, this video ends a little bit here, and um, it, it shows what is the the power of a curve tracer when you want to compare tubes with each other. I, I always say it's not very useful to judge the condition of the tube. For that, we have uh, totally different tests. But for balancing and matching, it's um, more or less the best thing there is. Okay, this, this ends the video here at this point.